Now, a woman called Miranda Vidak published an article titled Why Spare is about a much needed media reform. Prince Harry is not trying to take the monarchy down, but a British tabloid press. My family, allow me to share with you what Miranda said in her article as I review her article. And here's what she had to say about this kindly. And I quote, I usually write about things that moved me right after I experienced them. Strike while it's hot, method style. With spare, I wanted to read it at my own pace and observe the noise before I would offer my opinion. It's unchanged. A discourse about Prince Harry and his family. Although it amuses, amuses us endlessly, it's really about a much needed media reform. Since his family is in cahoots with tabloids, they're automatically loaded onto Harry's takedown train. My family, when Harry respond to abuse or smears, they're only said to be trying to take down their own family. Yet when members of the royal family threaten Harry Meghan, when Camilla wines and dines with people who abuse Prince Harry and Meghan, you don't hear a whiff from the UK press. You don't hear countless numbers of TV shows discussing why Camilla Parker Bowles, the Queen Consort, is whining and dining with Piers Morgan or Jeremy Clarkson, people who abuse Harry and Meghan. You never ever hear that. You know, the media, whenever Harry confronts them, they always take Harry's confronting them as an attack on the royal family. They feel like they are a part of the royal family. Really, really feel it. And no wonder, they feel like members of the royal family should have dinners with them, should party with them, should dance with them. As we have seen even Camilla Parker Bowles dancing with some carnival of so-called experts working for the UK tabloid media, like Arthur Edwards. My family, what Prince Harry is unhappy about is the corrupt relationship between the tabloid media and the farm. And there needs to be media reform in the UK. There needs to be. My family allow me to continue this article. And I quote, To the superficial eye, the Oprah interview, the documentary on Netflix, and the release of Spare, seems like it's about battle royale between Harry and his family. Many would characterize it as an internal struggle between relatives. Racism and misogyny in the British court. In the British court. And for those not thinking with their heads, roll outlaws who want to make money from their titles. My family, I find it very, very insulting that people can click onto any negative article about Harry Meghan and make money from the UK carnival, for the UK carnival of so-called experts, for the Maddox and the Rothmeyers. But when Prince Harry himself wants to take to tell his own story, when Prince Harry himself wants to tell his own story, it's like, how dare he? He's cashing in on his royal titles. However, some people are happy to read articles about Harry and Meghan from people who clearly 
are not close to Harry and Meghan. I find that quite unacceptable and also very much hypocritical, really. My family, Miranda, in an article, also says this, that, and I quote, This is fairly simple to decipher. Harry is not trying to take the monarchy down. Harry is trying to take down the British tabloid press. And they are decades overdue for a takedown. And the people who collude with tablets, in this case, his family, well, he's taking those two. I'm happy that Harry exposed Camilla, Charles, and even William. I'm happy about that, really. Many countries in the world know a clear difference between the regular ethical press and a tabloid press, meaning its citizens mostly know which one is which. And tabloids don't really enjoy much of the reputation in most parts of a sane world. They're consumed for entertainment. In Britain, however, the story is different. The British tabloid media rules everything. It influences politics, supports political parties, takes down political figures and sways elections. Remember, you can't be Prime Minister in the UK without having a talk with Rupert Murdoch. And the tabloids are one of the most dangerous media in the world, the British tabloid. And most of this tabloid media are owned by Rupert Murdoch. And draw a parallel, really, he also owns Fox News in America. I implore you to step out of the raw gossip mindset and think deeper about this. It's imperative to evolve here. Instead of thinking if you like or dislike Harry and Meghan, see what's at stake here. See what's at stake here. Many people already did. I read a tweet by at Rappi Eris the other day saying this, that, and I quote, we don't talk enough about Maddox's corrupt influence on the world, which is why I support Harry and Meghan. Maddox is a political opportunist, opportunist who had traded newspaper support to governments in return for regulatory favors. Then there are his connections with Putin. This is much more important than Megan's mug irritating you for no verbal reason. Exactly. You know what? Megan's, Megan gets trashed even for closing her own cardo. Touching her belly, a problem. Eating an avocado, a problem. Even holding a mug is a problem. It's really, really bad what they put both Harry and especially Meghan Markle through. Now Miranda asked this question. What's at stake here? What is at stake here? And here's what she says. Media shapes the reputation of the people they write about. Opinions are formed by reading the media and its residue discourse on social networks. People who are not in the public eye usually shake their heads when they are warned about the dangers of tabloid reporting, not noticing they are being radicalized by it. If you think you've come to your own conclusion of not liking Harry and Meghan in this scenario, you are wrong. All of you that hate her came to that conclusion with the help of the tabloids, with the assistance of the royal family who assigned Meghan the role of exactly 
what you're thinking about her right now, reading this. And it's clear. They succeeded in poisoning the minds and hearts of some people in the UK. But not all, but not all, thankfully. More and more people are opening their eyes into just what Meghan has had to endure. And people are calling out the UK royal cult that calls itself a family. People who are not in the public eye and have no experience with tabloid media can be very careless about the damage it can do to a person. Those people actually usually see the negatives of the press as a punishment someone deserves for being rich and famous. Now, my family, I've seen that quite a large number of times, really. The whole look, Harry and Meghan live in a multi million dollar mansion. Why are they whining, mourning, or playing the victim? Why is that? You know, does having money, does being rich exempt someone from being treated with basic human dignity? Some people want to punish Harry and Meghan for not being poor, for, not, for being rich and famous and refusing to put up with abuse for entertainment. And yet they know that this abuse has put the lives of Harry, Meghan, Archie, Lily, Diana in danger. Because what they've done is radicalize the minds of people to put Harry, Meghan, Archie, Lily, Diana in danger. My family, just because someone is rich does not mean they are not human. The article reads that if you're one of those people, but you think you're a good person, think again. You reading these lies and believing them, you are complicit. Tabloid media and any unethical media are nothing but another form of abuse. For all of you commenting, Harry is talking too much. He should be quiet. You are wrong yet again. And asking someone to be quiet about unfair treatment is a form of abuse in itself. An abuser always wants to silence his or her victims and does not want the victim to shine the light on the abuse. So the abuse can continue exactly as I've been saying, exactly. William kept on pushing, 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 pushing against Harry and Meghan. Harry and Meghan never ever mentioned his name, never, in the Oprah interview until the Harry and Meghan documentary, when William still went after Harry's wife, Meghan Markle. It's clear they were fed up. It's clear they were upset. And William has now been exposed. And the abuser is now sending threats to Archie, Lilibet, Megan, Harry. Harry's entire family because he was exposed by Harry. William has no one to blame but himself. And for once in his life, he should take accountability for his actions for once in his life. Now the article reads that the relationship between the double media and the subject they lie about is one of an abuser and a victim. That's what it is. The double media needs Harry to be quiet so they can continue making money inventing stories about him. Harry speaking out in spare and in interviews just interferes with their business model. They want to profit from bad-mouthing, trashing Harry and Meghan. 
But they don't want Harry and Meghan to profit from talking about their own lives. They believe that's only for the UK tabloid media. Even when Meghan is quiet right now, still they're mocking her, still they're abusing her. Still, they can't go a day without mentioning Meghan's name. More justification on why it's important for Harry and Meghan to tell their own story themselves. And even the producer of the Harry and Meghan documentary on Netflix had something very important to say. Why are some people okay with reading and clicking lies about Harry and Meghan? Stories written by someone else. But they're not okay with Harry and Meghan telling their own story. Some people want to profit from lies being told about Harry and Meghan. For putting the lives, for putting the lives of Harry and Meghan and their kids in danger. And expect putting the trauma however they are uncomfortable when they see that Harry and Meghan are telling their own story because they don't want to be exposed and they don't want you know Harry his interviews interfering with their business model their hate for profit business model the article continues and I quote, and if you wonder why his memoir was a bit tabloidy in some parts, that was clearly done on purpose. The story about the frosted penis is a tabloidy story. He is giving you the type of BS stories they write about, so they can't. He wants to be a source of his own stories, also mocking them a bit so you the reader understand the silliness of it all i once phoned a tabloid journalist after another barrage of dumb invented stories he wrote about me and told him and i quote if you need foolish things to be written can you please call me if you need drama I'll give you a far better drama than the one you invent. Invent. Just let it be at least be true. He said no. They want the freedom to invent the stories they want to invent about you. They want the freedom to invent the stories they want to invent about you. And they can't stand it when people they abuse or paint in a negative right light speak up stand up for themselves when they do that they say hey look they are always whining they are playing the victim yet my family we've seen all their number the countless number of abuses that harry and Meghan have been put through at the hands of the uk media they can't hide their abuse they openly show it for everyone to see for everyone to view Derek Luxon's vile comments is the perfect example. The editors of The Sun, they saw what he wrote. They still greenlit his vile hate speech column because they believed it was okay in the UK to print that vile hate vile, hateful stories. Hate for profit comments. They feel like it was okay. My family. And my family, they want the freedom to invent the stories they want to invent about you. But you, when you speak up, you are said to be whining, complaining. My family, Harry and Meghan are standing up for themselves. Because if they don't do that, if they don't stand up for themselves, then who will? Their own family won't. 
No one else will. Only Harry and Meghan can stand up for themselves. And of course, us, members of the squad also, are standing up and condemning the abuse towards Harry and Meghan because we love them. We support them. We see what they've gone through. And it's important to keep it on record. What has happened to you? Because one thing is clear. The royal family and tablets are very, very good at one thing. It's rewriting history. You can't let them rewrite the pain they caused to the late Diana. And also to both Harry and Meghan. Remember what they did to the BBC. You know, even the BBC said that, said that they'll never ever license the showing of the late Princess Diana's panorama interview. And they were jumping up, up and down. We've silenced Diana. We've silenced Diana. They were jumping up and down. My family, we must not let them rewrite history on their poor, abhorrent, disgusting, vile treatment of both Harry and especially Meghan and their kids Archie and Lily Diana. Harry is doing the only thing you should do when tabloid media exploits your life to make a profit. Harry is speaking up, up about his experiences, about what he's gone through. And Harry is doing the right thing. And we support and applaud Prince Harry for what he's doing, for standing up to defend his wife, his children, Harry is doing a remarkable, remarkable thing. And we support him 100%. Harry is doing the only thing you should do when tabloid media uses your life to create stories that make no sense. In his case, stories that jeopardize the safety of his family. And finally, in better stories, the tablets get rich on. If you are a bothered, a man is making bank on his own life, yet you aren't bothered that the tablet media is making bank on his life with invented stories, you are why this is happening. And why these tablets persist to exist. You are radicalized by them. And all of you who find an offense with a man being annoyed with almost 40 years of lies. The first meeting where you got radicalized by these tablets was when you got a chip installed with and I quote, but he, they say they want privacy. And why are they all over the place now? They never ever say that Harry and Meghan never ever left because they wanted privacy. They left because of a torrent of racist abuse, hounding, harassment, and lack of support from the royal family, who are also behind the abuse of both Meghan and also Prince Harry. They left to escape abuse. Harry and Meghan never said that they're leaving because they want privacy. And there are documented interviews in print and on video. They gave since they left the monarchy. And there is none that contains that sentence. The tablets served you that premise because they are the abuser. Who needs to silence their victim? They need the victim to be quiet so they can keep the abuse. AKA running the untruthful, misleading stories about him, them, both Harry and Meghan. Tablets actually want Harry and Meghan to want privacy and to be silent so they can run the show. Like they run it with the no complain, no explain folks at Buckingham Palace.
But we still know Buckingham Palace does complain and they do explain through sources. And it's what they did to Diana too. Diana began to talk after her divorce when, once again, the media did not leave her alone. Diana was stripped of her titles. The Queen never liked her. Charles did not love her. She was stripped of her titles after divorce from Charles. And they said she is not part of the family. And despite her getting a divorce, still, they never stopped hounding Diana. For those who also think that, you know, if Harry Meghan relinquished the titles, that somehow this abuse will stop. It never stopped for Diana. It never ever stopped for Diana. What makes you believe they'll stop abusing, abusing Harry and Meghan? If they haven't stopped for the past three years, despite Harry and Meghan leaving, fleeing the UK three years ago, what makes you think they'll stop now or tomorrow? Or if Harry and Meghan relinquish the titles, what makes you think they'll stop? The answer is they won't. They won't. You know? So Diana began to talk after her divorce, telling her story, revealing the inside works of the palace, an act that directly interferes with the tabloid business model. In return, they tried to discredit her and punish her for it by writing about her insanity and paranoia in hopes of silencing her. Harry is his mother's son and he, like Diana, understands how to ruin the business model by talking. By talking. And not just talking, making money while talking. Because what pisses off the tablets more is that Harry is making hundreds of millions when they look at that money, they feel like that's supposed to be theirs in their pocket, in their in their wallets, not on Harry and Meghan's pockets. When they see the number of deals, the multi-million dollar deals that Harry and Meghan have signed, they feel like, you know, Harry and Meghan are taking their kick away from them because they think that that was supposed to be for them, meant for them. My family... And that's why to ruin their business model, success, success is imperative. Success is the best revenge. Making a ton of money, making hundreds of millions of dollars worth of deals is what will piss off the UK media more. Harry and Meghan thriving. And that's why my family, I always wish... And hope that Harry and Meghan keep on thriving and keep on making a ton of money. Even I hope we get to call them billionaires. That will piss off the UK media even more, 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 my family. And even they will know that if they attack another spare in the royal family, they have an option to live and make money outside of the institution and make them think twice about. How they want to act with the next pairs that is William and Kate's children Lewis and Charlotte but I'm seeing that the target clearly here is Lewis my family if they are not lived I doubt the monarchy will still have the form they have today Enter the royal family part in the tablet abuse of their own family members. How did that happen? How did it happen that the grandiose British Empire ended up in bed with the British tablets? It must have begun somewhere. I did the research on that. When Diana died, the British tablets could no longer follow the roles. After receiving the bad press, the irony that they were to blame for her death. 
not having any way out of this and William being 15 years old at Eton with an extreme public interest in his life. After his mother's death, they struck a deal with the royal family to give them controlled access to William and also to Harry. And in return, do not excessively follow them around or write bad things about them. You all have heard how Charles, you know, his people would turn a bad story about Harry drinking into a positive story about Charles taking Harry to rehab. We've all heard of that really. From Charles PR spin guy Mark Boland who had relationships or friendships with people who worked as editors for the UK tablet media. You give them a negative story about Harry. You give them a negative story about Harry and then they give the person who benefits from that negative story good press. That person was Charles. And if Camilla saw Charles do that to his own son Harry leaking stories about him well she also did the exact same thing that Charles was doing to, through their PR guy, Mark Boland, at the time. My family. But when did the competitiveness between the roles start, actually start, long before the press deals? The problems arose with Diana's popularity. And now overshadowing Charles. It's a difficult task not to overshadow Charles, even someone with a fifth of Diana's charm. What confuses me here is why would popularity matter among the roles? The monarch is not a voted position. The next king or queen is not elected, but born. So, why are the future popularity games needed do these people serve the subjects or themselves Charles ego to Diana's priority doesn't really faze me as I'm convinced by the logic invested in me that that was the reason the marriage actually failed and not loving someone else after all princes and kings are known to have side pieces since the beginning of time and there is no reason he could not keep both he was jealous jealous of the attention diana received i can understand the bitterness between spouses but towards your children or siblings i would dismantle them on just an account of that it literally medieval how cruel it is what they're doing to their own the early example of this brutality stunned me, as written by Zeynep Tufekski for the New York Times. Sandy Henney, a former press secretary, said of Charles, When I joined his office in 1993, he was going through some pretty violent criticism. Bad father, unloving husband, unloving husband. I think he was pretty hot. She said, Mark Boland, Charles' deputy private secretary and PR advisor, worked to, to change Charles' image. Leaking to the media was reportedly one way to carry favor. Leaking. You leak against a member of your own family and you get favor from the media. You know, how can the media accuse any member really, any member of the royal family of trying to destroy the royal family when here they are demanding a member of the royal family leak stories about another so they can get good press. 
It shows, first of all, there is no love, respect in the royal family. It shows that there are only traitors who betray each other and indeed a dysfunctional family. So my family, the only one who destroyed the royal family is the royal family itself. And also the UK tabloid press. Now Henry said of Mark Boland, a brilliant manipulator. He got the result that he wanted. Boland, however, denied these accusations. Boland was also accused of approving a News of the World article claiming a 16-year-old Harry had taken drugs in exchange for praise for Charles for taking Harry to a rehab center. Illustrated with what the tablet said were photos of the visit. Harry writes that the seven-page tablet spread left him sickened and horrified and the photos were from an earlier official visit he had made to the center. Boland later admitted the sequence of events were distorted to make Charles look better. The coverage after Diana's death spanned the portrayal of Charles, no more the unfaithful husband, as Harry puts it in his memoir. Pa will now pre be presented to the world as the harried single dad. Charles used his own son. Got Harry trashed over things that Harry did not even do. And guess what? Who else would have told Harry's side of the story? Who else would have come out like Harry has come out right now and said that I was not taking drugs at that time? Those were lies from the UK media. Photos they had was from a visit to a rehab center. Who else would have told the world that? It's Harry who's telling his own story. And he has a right to tell his own story. In his own words. To correct the lies that have been told about him for years from the moment he was born. For many, many years, for decades. My family... No one can put up with a fraction of what Harry and Meghan have had to put up with in the farm, in the royal cult. And Harry and Meghan did the right thing to leave. These people were using Harry and Meghan as their scapegoats. And it is not okay. My family will have a part two of what Mirana Vidak said. First, I'd like to hear opinion on this what I just read you right now. Please inform me what you think about it kindly. With that, and so much more, stay tuned to our next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and support our ever growing family on YouTube. God bless Harry, Megan Archie, and Lady Diana and Dora Lagland. Harry and Megan will not be silenced. They have every right in the world to speak up about what they endured, the sufferings they endured at the hands of the royals. My family, Please stay tuned to our next video. Love you. Always and forever. Harry and Megan have a right to tell their own story. And make money from telling their own story. That makes the tablet so, so jealous and seething with rage. Because they wanted for her to come back begging. Well, that's just not happening. My family will continue this in my next video. For now, stay tuned to our next video. Love you always and forever. Spare is about a much needed media reform. Something has got to change in the UK media landscape. It can't be business as usual. The business of hate for profit. I am glad that Harry exposed the corruption of the UK media. Keep doing the right thing, Harry. The world is proud of you. We are proud of you. Stay tuned to our next video. Hello, members of Zesco Family TV. 
First of all, I want to say thank you for all your support that you give us to our channel. We don't take it for granted that you support this channel. I want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts for lending out your support and fighting against injustices, supporting Prince Harry and Meghan, showing them love. Love will always triumph over evil and for that I say thank you. Good will always prevail over bad. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you so much for joining this community, this amazing community of Zesco Family TV. I love you so much family from the bottom of my heart and I wish you all the best. May you have a great, great day. And I hope that you enjoyed this video and learned a lot, a lot of things. With that and so much more, stay tuned to our next video. Leave a comment below, like and subscribe. Love you family, always and forever. Sayonara.